What's up everyone? Welcome to my full in-depth review of Resident Evil 3 Remake. Now, I just finished this game about two days ago, so it's all fresh in my head, and I'm really looking forward to doing this review. I've sectioned it off into five different categories that I'm going to be reviewing for a total overall score of out of five. So those five sections are going to be level design, atmosphere, weapons and enemies, difficulty, and story. Weapons and enemies are kind of like one category that are going to go together, and we're going to look at the balancing between the two. So I played this game on assisted mode for my first go around, and so everything that I'm going to be reviewing is going to be based on playing this game in assisted mode. Let's just jump right into it. So for level design, the level design in this game is brilliant. Let's first define what I mean by level. When I'm using that terminology here, I mean from one story cut and atmosphere change to the next. Levels always begin and end with a save room. In Resident Evil 3, you begin in your last save room. These levels are not too long, but are also aren't too short. By the time you make it to the next big area, you feel like you're ready for it. This game is a race, and you really feel every mile of it. You are given time to explore, but you also feel the pressure of the story and the atmosphere pushing you forward. There isn't a lot of backtracking throughout the levels. There are times you go forward to grab an item and you have to bring it back somewhere, but you're never in a level long enough that you are continuously going back and forth. I know there are a lot of complaints about the length of this game and it being a $60 game. Now listen, I completely understand. $60 is a lot of money. It takes some of us over a day to make that with our wages. I do feel like this game has enough replayability for you to get your money's worth. After you complete your first playthrough, you feel like you need to take 10 deep breaths and a break. With that, you realize you missed a lot and your score wasn't what you wanted it to be. After your first playthrough, you were given coins. With those coins, you can buy add-ons to aid in your next playthrough to increase that overall score and allow you more time to search and feel more relaxed. My argument would be, if you want to get $60 worth of a game, here you can. It just may not be where some people wanted it to be. I have not touched the multiplayer mode resistance, but maybe try that out if you want more bang for your buck. So all in all, I feel like the level design in this game is brilliant. I mean, like I said before, you never feel like a level is too short or too long. It feels like it's just long enough and you're ready for the next section of the game and you're ready to tackle that next story part. So for level design, I'm going to give it a full point. I'm going to give it its, its full point counting towards our five point score. Next let's move on to atmosphere. Oh boy, this was my favorite part of the game. The environments are absolutely stunning, varied and vibrant, from city stores to hospital rooms and a creepy underground research facility. The colors, minor details within the cityscape, and the sounds really make you feel like you are there. I said many times throughout my playthrough that I really could feel within my body being in the game. What I mean by that is a combination of the sounds around me and my headset and the incredibly detailed environment made me feel anxious about what might be around the next corner. More often than not, around that corner was Nemesis. Nemesis stopping sounds are loud and realistic. The threat in Jill and Carlos's voice are pressing and you can feel that. The atmosphere, you really feel like you were there, walking through Raccoon City, either as Jill or as Carlos, trying to stop this virus, help people escape the city, or find the vaccine. This is a game you really can zone out in and forget that you're even playing a game. So for atmosphere, I'm going to give it a full point, counting towards our five-point score. Next, let's move on to weapons and enemies. I feel like the weapon to enemy ratio was pretty balanced. For most of my playthrough, I used the assault rifle, the handgun, and the grenade launcher. The handgun was best used, in my opinion, for the basic enemy types such as zombies and even the giant spiders if hit in their weak spots. I never felt like the handgun wasn't enough. Handgun ammo can be crafted or found in plenty of locations throughout the levels. The only place I felt pressed for ammo was in the hospital during Carlos's horde management challenge. More on that later. Essentially, I never felt like I didn't have enough ammo or health on assisted mode. Additionally, you have a reusable knife that is good for opening boxes and making sure enemies are actually down. If you're having trouble managing the amount of ammo that you're using or need, I would recommend using the knife. The assault rifle was great against hunters. Those things are fast, spontaneous, and do a lot of damage. 
The assault rifle allows you several quick rounds, preventing them from getting close to you. I rushed through my first playthrough, feeling stressed about the story, but also satisfied with my weapons, and I missed the shotgun until the very end. Again, going back to that replayability, if I want to do a shotgun playthrough, I can grab that thing at the beginning and go through it that way. I used it a few times, but for me personally, I didn't feel it benefited me greatly above the handgun. However, in most games, I don't use shotguns. If you do, I would highly recommend this weapon. I just chose the handgun over it. There are plenty of weapon attachments if you're able to find them in locked boxes and safes. For Nemesis cheese attacks, the grenade launcher is insanely powerful. They give you so many different types of ammo for it, such as mines, fire, and acid. They also provide means to craft these specific types in the world. I never really needed to do this, but I would save and pick up all of my grenade launcher ammo I could find. Most of my inventory was taken up by health and ammo, more on this in the difficulty section later. Other enemies include Drain Demos and Pale Heads. Pale Heads take up a few rounds of handgun ammo to go down. This might be a good time to utilize that shotgun. Drain Desmos are just gross and can really damage you if you aren't careful and plan your attacks to hit their weak spots. Finally, there are liquors as well, but only in the police station is Carlos. Just light them up with your assault rifle and you should be good. As you go through the levels and progress in the game, you come across a burst handgun. I personally don't like burst weapons in games, but if, that, if you like burst weapons, it's there for you. They give you the opportunity to play with one. You can find a special handgun called the Lightning Hawk. This can be found in the courtyard of the hospital as Jill. There are also frag grenades and flash grenades all over the place if you like those when you play zombie games. I personally didn't use them too much. However, for horde management, such as Carlos's horde in the hospital or any other, any other overwhelming horde, the grenades are great and they give you plenty of them. So for weapons and enemies, I'm going to give it a full point. I felt like it was really balanced between do we have the right weapon to tackle this enemy? Is the ammo available to me? Uh, yes, I felt like for any kind of uh, enemy, you could switch your weapon and you actually had to put some thought into it. And I appreciate that about this game. But it wasn't so overwhelming that you came up upon an enemy and didn't have the right ammo or weapon that you would need to efficiently take it down. Alex, so let's move on to difficulty. One of the toughest things to balance in a game is difficulty, length of the game, and level design. I truly feel like RE3 nails this on the head. Again, my first playthrough was on assisted mode, which does and should play into my perspective of difficulty. I never felt like the game was too easy and I was therefore bored. Likewise, I never felt like it was so hard I wanted to quit playing. My first death didn't even happen until the hospital as Carlos. I walked into a room where two hunters were just hanging out and I was not prepared at all for the jam session. A little planning and changing up the inventory and I overcame the task. My other death was the last section of the hospital when you defend Jill's room. This was fun and exciting. It combined horde management and ammo management. It took me three tries of trial and error and I got it. Although these were my only deaths in the game, it allowed me to enjoy the story and progression of the game. I don't believe number of deaths always equals difficulty. Let me say that one more time. I don't believe number of deaths always equals difficulty. I think a lot of times in games, people will turn up their difficulty if they don't feel like they're dying enough, and, they, and therefore they're getting all of their challenge from deaths. The difficulty in this game is a combination of feeling rushed by the story, the immersion, and inventory management. You're forced to make tough decisions regarding your inventory and what you choose to place importance on. Because of this, it allows players to play in their style. For example, I typically play a support role. My inventory was full with first aid sprays and healing herbs. Did I need all of those? No, probably not, but it's what made me feel comfortable while playing and running from Nemesis. If you're more of a DPS player, the game allows you to play that role. There are plenty of crafting options for ammo, likewise for health, allowing you to play whatever role you want. Save rooms are typically strategically placed and make sense within the level design. So again, I'm going to give it a full point for difficulty. I feel like Capcom really balanced enemy design and... Like I said before, the weapons, and that plays into difficulty, as well as where the save rooms are placed. You know, there's not too many of them, but they're there after every major, like, battle. And I, I never felt like this game was too hard or too easy. Like I said, I don't believe difficulty always equals numbers of death. So finally, we're going to move on to the last portion of this, which is the story. 
I'm coming into this with limited knowledge of the Resident Evil series. That being said, I was never confused. They make it clear what is happening in Raccoon City and what your job is. Jill Valentine is a badass and a strong female character. We need more of that in this gaming world, so I really appreciate this aspect of the story. She is funny, sarcastic, and strong-willed. Jill Valentine stands on her own two feet. Carlos is the first one to figure this out on his own. You watch his understanding of her strength grow over the course of the story to the point he is making comments to other characters about her not needing any help. Carlos supports and stands beside Jill as they fight to save Raccoon City together and themselves. Various side characters are introduced throughout the story. My personal favorite being Tyrell. He is a hacker and basically Carlos and Jill's sidekick. He's serious and caring, adding to the story development and understanding of Umbrella's role in the T-Virus. Nikolai is a villain done well, and he even looks like it. His Russian accent and evil-looking face make him one of my favorite villains within my video game playthroughs. The story is told through these characters and other side characters that are present in the cutscenes. It is also told through journal entries and personal thoughts of those who have passed. These entries are where a lot of my honest feelings regarding the story came from. So again, I'm going to go ahead and give the story a full point. Now, when I do reviews, I do think about these things in depth and I don't just hand out five star reviews as crazy as it sounds i give this game a five out of five not a 4.99 a five all aspects i've laid out here story level design weapon and enemies difficulty and atmosphere each of these sections hit the maximum amount of points for me leaving my review for resident evil 3 remake a perfect score if you'd like to check out more of my reviews, I continue to plan on doing these for the future for every game playthrough I do on my channel. That's why I started this channel was to play video games for you guys and do in-depth reviews as in-depth as, you know, as I can make them. I'm sure that I will expand on this and get better as I go. So feel free to subscribe, like this video, and turn on your notifications so you know when I post new things. I would like to see your comments below. What did you think about Resident Evil 3? Like, what is your overall review? Would you change any of the scores that I picked out here? Let me know down below, and I will see you guys next time.